It's a 1981 Dodge Murata. I've owned it since 2018. It originally was a PA car because when I bought it, it had a PA inspection sticker of like 87 and it came out of Indiana or Illinois or one of those states. I was replacing my original car, which was a 83 Cordoba, which is the same J body Mopar, just a Chrysler instead of a Dodge. That one seemed Pennsylvania way too much. It was my first car. It just got too far gone. I mean, PA got the best of it. So I found the next best replacement. And for those people listening to this that live in Florida, that have no idea what we're talking about. We're talking about road salt. Oh yeah, it, <laughs> it destroys everything up here. Were you looking for one of these specifically or? I was looking for a J body platform. Yeah, either okay. Cordoba, Murata. There was also an imperial but that's way too much electrical that i want to deal with because they had it like in digital dash and everything like that yeah. this is all analog because i had the parts like the rear quarter extension stuff like that the hard to find parts i had everything over the years i made that car a nice daily driver and i knew it was reliable everything off like an older mopar basically bolts onto these cars so i found another one i'm like okay everything i have will bolt onto this one and then i'll make this one a faster weekend driver was the body good on this one body and frame and stuff body and frame was good Most most of the paint you see is original except for the rear quarter extension and the i painted the hood this isn't the original hood either i took a day or two and buffed the whole paint i mean it's kind of through on a couple corners here and there but it's 95 percent original paint on the car it was faded it was orange i have original pictures to even show you it was it was bad when i bought it and it is the original interior too the car had forty-eight thousand miles on it when i bought it it was definitely sitting outside but it had forty-eight thousand miles was it running condition when you got it sort of sort of <laughs> the uh starting condition maybe i um running, huh? i didn't have a truck or a trailer and i took my buddy bill i called him the day before and i go hey uh i found a car we're gonna drive it home so i borrowed a repair towing plate just to get it back and he's questioning me on the way up man are you sure that we don't need a trailer i'm like ah, it'll be fine i'm like it runs we get up there and i call the guy i'm like hey about five i'm about five ten minutes away he's like oh when you get here just back your trailer down in the driveway and i, I pause i go I don't have a trailer. I'm driving home. He's like, what? What do you mean you're driving home? I'm like, I brought tires. I brought a battery. I'm like, it'll be fine. So we get there. And I mean, this thing's popping, banging, misfire. And every time I touch the brakes, it pulled hard left. Hard left every time. It was built for NASCAR. But it made it an hour from Acme back to Denora in one piece. What was the biggest challenge that you ran into with it? I did a lot more work to this one. Buffing the paint out. I did the rear quarter extensions, the rear end, the leaf springs, motor, tranny, hood, clean the interior, all the trim work in the interior. It's all been a challenge. I think the worst part of it was the rear taillight panel because that taillight panel is off of Cordoba and the Murata was different where they put the reverse lights on the Cordoba compared to the Murata. So I had to rewire the whole thing, actually cut bigger holes for the light sockets and then hooked everything up, knew the reverse lights were and all of a sudden the reverse lights didn't work. So I'm now tracing wires, trying to figure out where I messed up in the harness when I rewired the harness to find out somewhere between me parking the car in my garage and the reverse lights working to me tearing apart the rear taillight housing, the reverse light wire at the transmission broke off the sensor. I spent three days on that. I was tracing it. I was ripping wires back out. I had wiring schematics that my old tech teacher gave me for these cars. And I'm like tracing this, trying to figure out which wire is which. It was between that and trying to do the motor because the way my garage is, it's a big uphill slant. When I pulled the old 318 out, the engine stand took off and flipped the motor and nearly crushed my one buddy. So what's in it now? The 318 that was in it, it was an LA block. It was the original motor to the car. And I blew out cylinder three, lost all compression wasn't no good after that i got given a 97 318 magnum motor out of a 97 jeep grand cherokee so it was fuel injected it takes a different intake different oil pan you had to do a couple different things to the motor to actually get it to work but it's the same basic block it's still a stock bottom end i put a high-rise intake with a 650 double pumper carburetor on it long tube headers it's a very reliable platform as of right now i mean i do have some future plans with it too for the motor i, I do have a cam coming with valve springs and 2800 stall converter for the tranny too basically last two years have been getting it on the road running reliable like take it out 20 degree weather or take it out in 100 degree weather i mean it runs and drives and nice. runs pretty damn good fabricate the exhaust what right. exhaust it's is that just, why it sounds good yeah it's just headers <laughs> it, it is literally just long tubes nothing else just dumping right underneath the car i haven't got pulled over for it yet <laughs>
fun with it. You know, it's yeah. it's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's not the slowest either. And it, if I want to tear tires off going on the road, I tear tires off. Take it to shows, it gets a lot of attention. A lot of people are like, oh, you know, I haven't seen one of those in 30 years. Or is that a Ford Marauder? It got called a Buke at one point too, I think. Have you seen uh, many others? Junkyards. I've owned five of these cars. My dad has owned one. And as in five, I mean Cordobas and Marauders. I had, this is my third Marauder. I had two Cordobas and then he also has an 83 Murata right now. Other than the ones I've had, I've seen one brown one running around. Yeah. How about all your chrome? Like the chrome stuff on there all original or did yeah. you? Yeah, chrome stuff's all original. I mean, uh, it took a lot of buffing and polishing. The wheels, they're original, but not original. This is the set I had on my old 83 Cordoba, but they actually are factory 15 by seven aluminum wheels that belong on this car. Now, I had Kragers on it for a little while, got tired of the Kragers, they didn't look great. Me and my buddy put super stock springs on the back. They're originally for a max wedge car, like like 65, 66 Plymouth max wedge, but they sold the adapters for the F body, the J body to extend it. So it, it's sitting on Mopar super stops, super stock springs for an automatic car, 3,400 pound car. So it actually raised the rear end a good bit and it did help at the track too, cause it shoves those tires right into the ground. I don't have any issues with the track with traction. This hood's actually off the black Marauda I owned. It was just a parts hood. Under the hood here, it's a 1997 Magnum 5.2 or 3.18. I did the whole wiring harness swap. So basically this thing came with a thing called Lean Burn. Lean Burn was Chrysler's emissions control in the late 70s, early 80s. This original motor that was in this car pinged like no tomorrow because of that. It had a module that sat on top of the air cleaner. It was junk back end. So <laughs> it didn't really run good with it. I had another harness that eliminated the Lean Burn, switched it back to the older electronic ignition. They're OEM, but they're after market valve covers they're actually made by mopar rpm air gap intake a holly 670 street avenger now throttle return spring bracket i painted the engine long tube headers from jigs the transmission was a rebuilt 904 with a shift kit and then basic stuff to make it reliable like the clutch fan the radiator all new hoses xl eight millimeter spark plug wires besides the intake and the headers the motor is untouched internally just little stuff to make make the most out of a small 318 it's a very reliable platform i did delete the air conditioning under here too it was an ac oh, yeah. car i deleted all the air conditioning brackets and all the ac AC brackets, the AC delete brackets, I guess you can call them regular alternator brackets. They're off a 1970 D100. <laughs> that was just a parts truck I found laying around, got had the right brackets, and I found out the, the power steering belt is the same size I needed for the alternator. So it's easy. I just go over two power steering belts when I need them. You said this was your fifth one yeah what do you love about it so much it was a cheap way into the mopar world it's an easy platform everything swaps into it and it's just something i know that cordoba i touched about 95 percent of it i've done way more to this car than i did on the cordoba this car i have a lot of time and it was all done in a garage just a garage with a couple friends zach was there when we were putting this motor in and bill and kyle i was dropping the motor on kyle and hell even <laughs> e even my wife coming out to help yank the tranny out of the cordoba to go and to get built to go in this one and you don't see them and I, I just love people coming up to me and oh i've never seen this or what is this there's a price on everything i hate to say that but yeah, yeah this car would be very hard to get rid of i mean talk to my wife it might go tomorrow <laughs>